that everybody that is here and has commented in the question box is going to get a copy of today's recording, but you have to have commented in the question box. So if you missed that at the beginning, look for the question box because you do want to get a copy of this recording. You might want to slow me down, speed me up, review something that I cover that will be helpful to you when you're ready to really take action and apply what you've learned. Know that you will get a recording of this and I will be highly interactive. So use that question box to ask me questions. I will be respectful of everyone's time though. Do know that if it's lengthy or detailed or personal, I will save it to the end. Now, when I do the end q and I turn off the recording for your privacy sake and also because it's the benefit of everybody who's here live, okay? So I do not record that, but everybody who's commented here will get a copy of today's. And then I'll tell you in a little bit how to get a copy of today's slides too. Remember, this will not show up for 24 hours though. You will not get a copy for 24 hours. So at the end of today, do not have hurt feelings because I forgot you. I didn't. It just takes that long for the system to to be able to render that. Hello, let me see. I do see. So Paul, I see Beth here. Social media and marketing, podcasting. Love these programs. I'm so glad you love these programs, Beth, and you're participating. Take full advantage of it. I also see here, um, Char, Char is here. Chari, Chari. Yeah, right. Um, oh, Sherry. I, this is one I wish we were face to face because I'd love to hear with the Woodson County Chamber of Commerce. And absolutely, you certainly will. And you'll get it to whatever email you registered with. So just commenting here, you'll be good. Cherie, thank you. See, I love the phonetic spelling. So today we're going to talk about how you can reach customers online. Now, it says with Google, that's because Google's the number one search engine in the world. But let me give you a hint. Everything that I'm training you on today will apply for all search engines to see you. Because in order for people to do business with you, they have to know you exist. And if you're not visible, they don't know you exist. So it's important for us to be visible first by all search engines and meet our customers wherever they're at because it takes a tremendous amount of time, energy, and money to convince them to go over here when they're spending time over here. So how do we reach them? Where are they? And if you need to learn anything Google, you can go here to this URL. And of course, if you need closed caption, you can find the amazing Michelle at this URL right here. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in, everybody. All right, when you wanna find something, where do you go? Google, you know, I tell people, yes, I could carry a business card and back in the day I did, but right now I just tell people to Google me. And the important thing for you to know is if you're not showing up on the first page of Google, so that's 10 organic search results per page. If you don't show up in the first page of Google, then you don't exist. People don't look past there unless they're hunting you down or you owe them money. They're not gonna look past the first 10 searches. That's one page of an organic Google search. So are you showing up there and better yet, are you dominating that? When I say dominate, is every there result, every result that's there, all 10 about you? Is it maybe your site, your LinkedIn profile, maybe a blog post that you wrote, maybe your Instagram profile? Is it something that you put up on your page? So it could be maybe a blog post or even a page of your site. Is it your Google business profile site? What is it? As long as it, you dominate it, that's how you position yourself as an expert in your field, but you need to at least show up because if you don't show up, you're not visible, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in and talk about showing up with Google. We know it matters, you know, March 2020 changed the whole world. So some people had this on their radar, but they really had to accelerate it up because 74% of us, when we want to know, go, do, or buy, reach for this device first. Nowhere else. In fact, when I'm working with web designers, I explain to them, design for mobile first, laptop, desktop second, if you have limited resources, because this is where people go first, and that is not going to change. That trajectory just increases, and people even want to know locally for local business who has the product, who has the service, who has the inventory. So they are looking online. It does not matter whether you're worldwide e-commerce or you're doing local business. Yes, Sharon, perfect, perfect. I'm glad it all sounds good. Thank you. So let me share with you a quick video. All right. So now I'm going to take you to this video. Hold on just a sec. Now, do remember what I said about me switching video. So because I'm switching to video, if you lose sound, it does mean you may need to call in because you're in a different video, uh, different, different audio system. Bear with me just a moment while I make this quick switch. All right. There we go.
People ask us all the time, how do I get into work? Right. There we go. Now, I just need confirmation in the question box that you guys can still see and hear me because that's always the problem when I go to video. It does switch systems there. All right. Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation, everybody, that I'm not just speaking to myself. All right. So you saw moments there. You saw some really, really unique moments. And I want you to really think about those moments when your customer needs you. And even one step back from those moments is when they're in the looking zone before they need you, but they're experiencing something in their life that they may need, may need your product, service, or solution. We're going to talk about how Google search works because this is really important for you to understand. Understand Google's the number one search engine in the world. 98% of the world goes to Google first when they want to know, go do or buy. Understand also that YouTube is the number two search engine in the world and both are owned by Google. As businesses, local businesses, it is our job to really understand how search works and how people use it in order to be visible and it to serve us. So we'll talk about how you can reach customers online with search engine optimization. This is being seen by search because it won't show you up in the results if you aren't seeing first by the search engine and also how to create your business profile because this is very key it is a wonderfully free tool that will help you become more visible how to amplify yourself online with advertising now do know that everything that I'm talking about today is hundred percent free and while I'm going to touch on Google Ads and I will seriously just touch on it briefly do know that you can use Google Ads and a lot of the tools in Google Ads for free you don't even have to enter a credit card or any payment form and I'll show you how to do that because I'm a bootstrap marketer I've been in marketing and actually been running a business for over 20 years I am bootstrapping it and I like to work with free or small fee and then also I will share a recap and resources of a lot of different things that you can use that are 100% free. Make sense? You didn't hear the video, no worries, Sharon. If you didn't hear the video, there is a phone number. Let me go back to that real quick. Let me pause my sharing and let me go back that, to that screen so you can screenshot it, Sharon, um, because I will have one other video in here and you need this phone number. Okay, so let me go back to showing you. You're going to need this phone number right here. Just take a screenshot of that because that is where you need to go if you didn't hear it. A lot of times browsers have updates and this is what happens. That's why I give that as a backup. Okay. So if you need to take a screenshot of that, let me leave that up for one more moment and then I'm going to dive back into our webinar. All right. Perfect. No worries. No worries. It's important that you hear and you fully get to participate. All right. So let me pause this now another moment. So I'm just not flashing. Um, slides in front of you or screens in front of you. All right, let's now talk about how Google search works because Google search is something that we need to know as small businesses. It's how we can be more visible. Oops, there we go. So when you search for something, you know, you can go here into the Google search bar, the URL. So that's the address bar where you put the website address and now you can search. And this is what search results look like. You will see a text ad usually at the very top. If you see photos up there, those images are shopping ads. So both a shopping ad and a text ad is a paid position. You have to pay to be able to be seen there. Those are what Google ads do for you. Then remember when I was telling you about the 10 organic search results, this is where the 10 organic search results end up. 
but right here is Google Business Profile. This is a 100% free tool, and do not believe the myths that it costs you any money or that you, if you're home-based, you can't use this. You can suppress your address and still show you sort of the area. So if you're by appointment also, if you don't go, but you go visit customers and deliver to them at a coffee shop or you send it to them, you can still use Business Profile and see how nice it actually stands out and how much visual real estate it takes. When you're branding your business and when you're fighting for visibility, this is a great tool. And the more tools that I can have in there, to me, it's a race for visibility. And I would much rather have two, three, four more horses in the race to get me there because when uh, people show up and they, when I show up when people are searching, now I'm seen as an expert at what I do. So behind the scenes, how Google search works, people believe that Google is the World Wide Web and we're not. Google is the biggest library of the World Wide Web. So when somebody goes to search, like I showed you there happening in the animation through the search bar or through the URL, then what they're doing is they're going out there and Google bot goes and looks for that information. It crawls through all the sites and tries to find as much information as it can. If you remember back in the day when you would go to the library, you would go in and you might have searched the card catalog, right, to see where something's at. Then what you do is you take it and you go out to the stacks and go find it. It was usually categorized by a Dewey Decimal System, right? That was everything in that information. Well, Google bot does the same. The problem is, a lot of business owners don't know where the door to the library is. They rely on Googlebot to find it and for it to present information on Google. And while it's a really great bot, I don't like to rely on anybody for my online reputation or who decides on the growth and management of my business, especially I have to wait 60, 90 days for the bot to see me. I want to be seen immediately as small businesses. Cash flow is king. So this is truly important to you to enter things in the library. That's your job as a professional in your business and as the owner. And if you're not entering your things in the library, you really are putting yourself as a disadvantage. And I'll talk to you about how you can enter that as we go through the webinar here. Now you can also reach customers through search engines optimization. So you can actually, getting a lot of, okay, there we go. I was wondering why I'm getting a lot of, here it is. Something is hitting. Sorry about that. Just don't like that. In your ear. All right, there we go. But you do want to look at the organic search results and show up there. It's really important for you to know how people search you when they know you exist or when they don't know you exist, or when they don't know you exist, and they have no clue that there's a product or service that can serve them. So it's important for you to understand that and where things show up, because it all depends on how people search. And understand they're not just texting words in here. You know, they put complete phrases, they speak their search, voice search is very much on the increase, so they say, hey Google, hey Alexa, and I apologize right now if I set off anybody's Alexa, to be able to come up with and show that you're here. But when you can get that kind of good visual real estate, that is very valuable between your business profile and being able to showcase here with different extensions to really show what you do, that's a powerful place to be. So that has to do with search engine optimization. And I could do a whole week class on that. And I actually do coach a lot about that within our group that we have. But um, what I will cover today are the high points. You want to make sure that your business is visible. So you do have to know how the search engine works. And it will help you connect with customers because now that they can see you and as well, it gives you the ability to increase sales. Now, I'm going to say the word sales. What I do mean when I say that, because I do come from an e-commerce background, is I mean conversion event. What is a conversion event? This is something successful that they're doing on your site that you know makes this interaction successful. So it could be they leave their email address. They download a PDF and leave their email address. They could watch a video. They could listen to an audio podcast or they could buy from you, okay? So just know that that's what I mean when I say sales. And you can learn how to get started with SEO by using the starter guide here. If you look at the bottom left-hand corner, there's a URL there and I'll move my little pointer out of the way so you can screenshot that. Remember, you will get a copy of today's webinar, the recording, 24 hours from now. If you've commented in the question box, you do have to have commented there. And if you will put the number five in the question box, you'll get a copy of today's slides too. So you can use both hand in hand to go over this or review it, and then even use it as a checklist. All right, the big thing here is to publish great content. And the only way you can publish great content is knowing your customer and what their needs are. When you are an expert in your customer and really understand 
their journey, their decision journey. Now you can meet them at points and help them avoid pitfalls. And when you do that, you truly have positioned yourself as an expert. When you are better at articulating your customers' needs than they are, they see you as somebody who can help them solve their needs. You also do need to look at your page titles and descriptions. In SEO speak, we talk about that's H1. There needs to be one H1 title for every page. There needs to be a description that matches the keywords that people are searching for. So keywords means what are the words that people use to search for your product, service, or solution. It is not always your lingo. It is not, I need a pediatric dentist. No one says I need a pediatric dentist or an orthodontist. They th say things like, hey, Google, I need somebody to help me straighten my, straighten my 13 year old's teeth. What do I need to do next? So use those words. I say this because during everything that happened in March 2020, the number one search phrase for tech support was not tech support. It was, I hate my computer. I hate my computer. So if you did not have that in your page descriptions and your titles, anywhere in any of your socials and your profile, you were not visible because for tech support, that's not what people were searching for. They were searching for, I hate my computer. So let's say you could have a page title that says, do you hate your computer? Has your mantra been during the pandemic? I hate my computer. Do you wake up in the morning wondering, am I gonna throw it out the window? How much do I hate my computer? We can help you with that. Now you're gonna show up because you're matching what people are looking for, not what you think they should be looking for. Never should on people. Don't tell them how they should look. I said should, S-H-O-U-L-D, but do know that it's important to know how they look, what they need, and match them where they're at. Now you want to be organized, all right? So be organized. Put that content together neatly. The number one reason people jump off of a website and they don't want to look at it anymore is because it's a disorganized hot mess. They cannot find anything in there at all and they're spending all that time looking around. I do an entire webinar about how you can make your website work for you and how you can lay that out and structure that. But it's important for SEO to be seen by the search engine so the search engine can figure out how to find information as well as customers and potential customers that are looking here. All right, everybody who wanted a copy of today's slides, I see you put five there. And if you want a copy of today's recording, make sure that you've commented in the question box. Now, I'm curious here. I am really am curious just because I want to do a shout out for if anybody's here from Midland, Odessa, Texas, I'd love to know. Let me know in the question box, okay? Now, one of the tools to know what the keywords are that people use is Google Trends. You can find this here, lower URL, right here, g.co slash trends. Becca, perfect Becca. I'm also from Midland. I'm two miles away from you, right here close to the mall. That's where my, my home office is, and I am right here. So if you ever need me to come in person, I'm there, okay? I just wanted to let you all know that. You may let them know that because I'd love to do that. That's the benefit of being here in the local community. But this is Google Trends. Take a look there at the lower left bottom corner, URL, g.co slash trends. How many of you have used Google Trends? By putting the number one there, said, let me know if you've ever used Google Trends. Because to me, it's one of the unsung heroes of all the Google tools. So Jenna, you use it. How do you use it? I'd love to know. Because you can use it to find out what people are searching for right now, not just across the United States, through the state of Texas. If I want to know in the last hour how many people in Midland, Texas, where I'm home based at, are searching for a product, service, or solution, or a phrase, I can look for that too. I can also find out what they're looking for. So I was flying into Oklahoma City. I did a search on Google Trends, and I found out the top trending top in Oklahoma City when I was flying in was Ariana Grande, okay? I have no idea why Ariana Grande was trending for Oklahoma City, but when I landed, I asked my Lyft driver, hey, so why is everybody talking about Ariana Grande today here in Oklahoma City? At least that's the number one search term. And he said, oh, well, because she sold out downtown. She sold out the venue downtown. So it's really been a mess because they've really, they've they blocked off a lot of the streets and a lot of the parking lots in Bricktown where a lot of the hotels and the restaurants are at. So it's a big issue and a lot of people are trying to figure their way around it. I knew that from looking at that. So you can look at this as well. You can see also what's popular, not just in your area, but within the last hour, the last four hours, you can get that granular. You can get by zip code too, which I like to do because if you're going to present information, if you're ever wondering, my gosh, what is it that I post on social? Well, what are people talking about today? Remember what I said about fishing where the fish are. It's much easier to show up where people's eyeballs are already at 
and get their attention as opposed to you going over here and trying to spend a lot of time, energy, and money to get them to come over here because that really takes quite a bit. Now, you can also find out how many people are searching for your competitor and what words they're using to find your competitors. So you can do a lot of keyword research there. You can monitor your brand. I like to do this every morning. I actually put our brand in or a company that I'm working with brand. So I look at their business brand and then I look at other their competitors and find out what words they're finding their competitors are with. And that's what I usually recommend and say, hey, we need to start looking at content that addresses this so we can show up on the radar where the eyeballs are already looking right so if you can earn some of your competitors business yourself even better but what i love is this actually helped a pizza restaurant so a pizzeria they were thinking that they needed to go with um actually a different variety so some specialty pizza they wanted to put pineapple on the pizza and they thought maybe they needed to lower their price to bring in more business but when they looked what was trending in the area and they were not in Hawaii so it was not pineapples not local to them but the number one trending topic was farm to market tables and local farmers market so what he did instead of lowering his price he went ahead and talked to two local farmers and he features their vegetables on his pizza and he broadcasts and shows that now he's showing up where people search the same thing happened with a veterinarian in Corpus Christi Texas the the what was being searched that week that was the most popular search was the cheapest veterinarian in Corpus Christi he did a great video a whole blog post and all of his social posts went out around I am not the cheapest veterinarian in Corpus Christi so use the words but we are the best because we do this for your four-legged family member and so he covered that too okay so Jenna, I'd love to hear how you use it. This is how you can use it. You can find out trends. If you don't know the business or the industry enough, this will give you what the seasonal trends are, and you can plan everything around that, your research, content freshness, so that you're on topic, on brand for what people are doing. You can monitor your competitors. You can also see what the Google trends are on YouTube. Again, if you're thinking about doing a video, and a lot of times people will repurpose their Instagram reel or story or their TikTok to YouTube shorts, which YouTube shorts, the algorithm really favors YouTube shorts and those results are shown up in Google search so you can decide what you're actually going to put there and repurpose your content across all socials and then house it there in YouTube and it can go all the way far back as 2004 when the world began really that's when Google was born and you can go all the way that far back and see especially if you're working with something that has a longer sales cycle like a home you know you don't buy a home every year so it might have a longer sales cycle that you need to take a look at okay that is 100% free. You can also use these tools to check your load time. Do know that if your website does not load in four seconds or less on a mobile device, then you will lose over half, 53% of your traffic. It needs to load in four seconds or less on a mobile device, or you'll lose over 53%, over half of your traffic, and for every second over, you'll lose another 10% of your traffic. So you could be working your butt off, posting over here, doing TikToks, dancing the life, the world away, and now you drive them to your site, and if it takes longer than four seconds to load, they are gone. You'll lose over half, and every second over, you'll lose some more. So do look how long it takes your, load, your site to load. And I know that sometimes with e-commerce sites, it takes a little bit longer. I work in the international e-commerce business, but I will tell you, even e-commerce sites, I work with one e-commerce site, it takes 1.8 seconds for them to load all their SKUs all of their products because they're very focused on that and that's on a mobile device remember that's where we go first when we want to know go do or buy so as you think about this how fast is your site know that some of the Shopify themes and I'm a huge fan of Shopify but some of the themes take 3.8 seconds to load just the theme so that's the design the borders everything on there the fonts that they're using and that's not even adding pictures or videos or any of your content so keep that in mind that you've got four seconds and that's it before you'll lose half. Also, what does it look like on all devices? Because we're all not iPhone, I'm Android, um, but we're all on different devices too. Tablets, laptops, on desktops, what are you on? So you wanna be sure that your site looks good on all. In fact, I will tell you, as much as you'd love to be in the first page in organic Google search, so that's the 10 organic search results, results that show up there, do know that if your site isn't secure, so if you don't have the S to it, or if it's not mobile responsive, which means that if it's not mobile responsive, you'll have to pitch a zoom to see it real clearly, or you have to swipe side to side to read a sentence. If it's doing any of those two things, there is nothing in the world 
you can do SEO wise to show up on the first page of a Google search because it's not happening. The algorithm actually penalizes you for not being secure and not being mobile responsive. So you will not show up on the first page. This is basic and something that is foundational that you have to have done right away. And then of course you'll use these resources and I'll talk to you about how you can figure out your site speed as well as whether or not you look great on mobile. All right, Do Google Trends on Google Trends, what is the difference between search term and topic for the same query? Oh, because sometimes it's just a term that somebody puts in, but now there's maybe a topic that people keep talking about. So we see a lot of blog posts, maybe even alt text showing up on photos. So that's a great question. Deep, deep Tish? Deep Tish? That's a great question. So that could be the difference between the two. I actually look, like to look at both just to make sure that I've got an idea of where it's going. And then I look um, at what's breakout terms. So breakout terms means that Google is seeing that rise, but it's not seeing it rise enough or has it in the algorithm yet where Google ads will start pinging you a higher cost per click. So I like to use some of those breakout or rising terms because you get the visibility, but you don't have to pay so much for the visibility if you're deciding to use those keywords for ads too. All right, so this is how you measure your site speed. Look at the bottom left-hand corner, you see g.co slash test my site. I'll get that pointer out of the way. This is where you put your URL in and it will tell you how fast or how slow your site is. Now, not only will it do that though, because this is my one of my tools that I love to, to introduce people to because it's free, it's 100% free, it'll tell you what is slowing down the site. So it'll tell you how fast or slow your site is and what's slowing it down. And even better, it'll email you how to fix it. So I am not tech support, much as my parents love to see me drive up in the driveway and dad likes to say, oh, tech support's here. I'm so far from tech support, it's not even funny. But my sons help me build the website. So what I do is I get that and I forward that email to them and I say, fix this. That's my tech support, but everything is there on how to fix it and make sure your site speed stays within four seconds or less. Also remember what I said about the door to the library? This is Google Search Console. This is Google's library. It is up to you, it is your responsibility as a business owner to enter right here your website into Search Console, g.co slash search console. The reason you want to do this is because Googlebot will take some time to find you. And remember what I said, I don't want anybody or never do I ever recommend to a small business of, or local business of any kind to let the search engine just figure you out. You own that, it's your reputation, you take in charge of your first impression, put it on there. So when somebody is looking for you or information you have or a service or solution you provide or a product, now they can find you because if you think about it, this is like Googlebot goes out to the library, somebody's searching for one sentence in the paragraph of your book, your website being the book that you own. And if you don't put the book on the shelf, it can't find you. And if it doesn't find you, it's going to put all your other competitors up there and show them that information because it's looking for correct information that the user, the person who's searching, can find. So see whether or not you're in the actual library. Have you entered yourself in the library? All right, so how you can do that is you can go to google.com and see where you show up. Now, if you wanna hang with me afterwards, I can show you how much the search engine actually sees about you or whether or not I even can see that you are in the library or not. So I'm happy to do that, but I'll do that towards the end because we do have limited time. And um, if you need to get down the road to go to a meeting, I understand that too. We've all gotta take care of business, right? To your butcher baker, candlestick maker in your business. And now you have to be in charge of your, the chief marketer. Now with a business profile. How many of you are using a business profile? By a show of ones, let me know in the question box. Because the business profile, if you see it here on a desktop laptop, perfect, I see that you're using it. See it right here, that business profile looking nice, taking some good visual real estate. That's where it shows up, but do not believe the myths that you have to, if you're home based, then you can't show up there or anything like that. I work with a lot of skincare consultants who have corporate headquarters in Dallas, Texas, but they still want to show case that they show and actually are here, they sell here. So people do business with them, not with the corporate headquarters, which they can absolutely do by putting this in their service area, but they don't want people showing up at six o'clock in the morning looking for foundation or anything. So they suppress their address. What you can do if you don't have this is go to google.com slash business, go to this URL here, and now you can start and do know that if you have a free personal Gmail account, so you do not 
do not have to have the paid workspace account, a free personal Gmail account, you can use all of these tools for free. If you do not have a Gmail, not to worry, you can just utilize a Google, free Google account, and all you need to do is go to google.com slash accounts, A-C-C-O-U-N-T-S, so plural, create an account, use your email address, it does not change it to Gmail, create a password, and like any other password protected site online, that's how you access it, okay? So now you can have a Google business profile. We do an entire webinar. I'm not going to cover that in detail here, but you do want to be sure that you have the complete business info and it is matching what people search for. Remember, it has to match because that's number one in Google's algorithm. How relevant are you to what somebody's searching? Relevancy means that you have to match the words, the exact words that somebody's searching for. So it's important for you to be an expert in your customer. Now you can add photos and videos. You be in charge of your visual branding because visual branding is very powerful. And you can also do things like put um, your booking. So how they can book, they can leave messages and message you directly, but not divulging your actual mobile number. So it's nice to be able to have that immediacy of text because sometimes the person that earns the business is the one who answered the question right away and responded right away. Real estate agents, we know this, right? And you can also highlight your products and services. Again, just elongating and really grabbing a lot of good visual real estate. What you can also do with Google Business Profile is you can post. So this is a what's new post. This is an update post that you're doing. But do understand this is only visible on search and maps for five days. That's all you've got, five days. If you're not posting every five days, then you're not visible in search and maps. And I will have a lot of people ask me, why does my competitor show up above me? And a lot of times this or the category that you've chosen is the culprit. Your reviews are also here, which is very important because people are reading reviews. Online reviews are like word of mouth on steroids. And people take third party validation very seriously compared to us as business is saying we're amazing they just don't believe that but they believe a third party or even a past customer saying that so you manage your reviews in Google business profile too and then as well as messages remember what I said you can text message back and forth just like you're doing that from the map app and your phone you can do all of that so we deprecated the get your business or your Google my business is what it was called before we deprecated that tool it's going away but you will see that this app and messages are available now through Google Maps so now you can reply to messages and what's even better is that other people on your team could reply to so it doesn't have to be you you're all here learning about what you need to do here in this webinar and somebody else is responding for you so to be able to go and do your Google business profile you'll go here to google.com slash business and it will walk you through. It's pretty intuitive. Do know that before you make any changes to it, you do have to be verified. So do not try to make changes while it's going through the verification process until you get that postcard in hand. And a little hint, it doesn't look like a postcard at all. It looks like a W-2 with perforations on the side and top. So do not shred it and throw it away that it is an ad. It is not an ad. Okay, now with online advertising, remember what I said, that I'm just gonna touch base on this and really I'm gonna show you how you can use Google Ads for free, but let me show you the benefit of Google Ads first. So remember what I said about it's gonna be a video, let me bring on Trade Street Jam because I really just love her story. One of the things, if you've never put together your brand story and you don't have the hero story set up or anything about your service or solution, this is one to pay attention to because they really put all of good elements of story branding in here. Let me see, where is it? This is it here. I think it is. Everybody likes jam. Who doesn't like jam? Seriously, I dream about flavors. Trade Street Jam Company makes low sugar vegan jams for pretty much everything under the sun. Honey, do you know how many things you can do with this jam? You can make cocktails, you can put on roasted meats or veggies, oatmeal. The uses are endless. I've been a chef for about 15 years. I needed something fun to do after work. I'm not a big like TV watcher. I would stop at this like store on the way home, grab a bunch of fruit, anything like weird and exotic that they had, and I start cooking, I start jamming. <laughs> Too much, you don't like the puns. <laughs> 
you like the bananas, honey? Yeah. My husband is my test dummy, I guess you can say. <laughs> mm, you want some more? You like mommy's cooking? When I started Trade Street, I was selling on another e-commerce platform, and we were also selling a lot of jam in person. But COVID hit, and all the markets shut down, which freaked me out. I'm already scared about being a new mommy. And then on top of that, I'm worried about the life of my business. People started ordering specialty food online, so we immediately had to pivot and focus all of my efforts on selling online. When people go on Google and they search jam or jelly, I want them to be able to find my brand. With Google Ads, they can type those things in and I pop up. You guys, that's huge. Being able to sell on our website, it really did save us. I couldn't imagine going back to not using Google products. We went from making 2,000 jars every two months to making 2,000 jars every two weeks. Our sales increased by 1,000%. <laughs> it was crazy. I've hired four or five different contractors. Hiring feels amazing. I think it's so important for our product to have a story behind it. I think when people see a woman behind the brand, a person of color, it just really adds something to that jar other than jam. Oh, you kiss mommy, you kiss it, mommy. I want Zola to be able to grow up and look at me and say like, my mom did that. <laughs> I wouldn't trade that for the world. <laughs>
businesses experiences and others in those industries you can get specific as targeting towards a zip code or a city or even a county or you can even advertise near your address and choose a radius around there and one of the biggest hints i can give you is to go with the budget that google actually comes up with and then the thing I, the reason why I can say that is because I'm never setting and forgetting it. I never recommend that. You do need to go back and measure. Measure your marketing because if you're not measuring, you are not marketing. This is really key because now you can make good decisions on exactly when things and what things are working and what you want to teach Google about what works with your ads and understanding your best customer in your business. Now you can review that ad, of course. You can come up with lots of different variations. So you total control of this but a lot of people don't know how to do this and this can be overwhelming when you are being butcher baker and candlestick maker also with your business and taking care of your customers all right so that's about ads so i've covered quite a bit here right and i do want to go through a recap and resources but now i want to hear what your questions are so feel free to ask those questions in the question box because i have talked about First of all, how you can show up, you can show up in an ad, you can show up in business profile, you can show up in organic results. What's better is when you show up in all, understand when you connect all the Google tools, it verifies to Google that your information is correct. And the number one reason Google is the number one search engine in the world and YouTube's number two, both owned by Google, is because the information is correct that's presented to people. Why is it correct? Because we get that from you as the business owner and you confirm that by hooking up Google Analytics, Google Search Console, Google Merchant Center, Google Business Profile, Google Ads, YouTube, Google Sites. You start putting all of that together that now confirms to Google that this information is a viable business and therefore you are valid. And when you are validated, now you are presented on the first page of an organic search. And remember, that's where people look. There's a going joke already that, you know, where do you hide a dead body? You hide it on the second page of Google because nobody looks there. It's always the first page. So you do have to show up there. Do you take a look at trends? It's a powerful tool. Te use test my site. I'd love to hear if you guys, anybody tested their site while I've been doing this. I'd love to know how fast or how slow your site is. Let me know in the question box. Use the search console to get in the door of the library and place yourself in the library. Own it. It's yours, your business. Take command of it. See and say what Google should see about your business. Okay. I always know when people don't know this part right here, because I'll hear comments like, I don't know why Google can't find me. I don't know why Google's showing up this. That even is a, an old business that I had. Then I know, okay, you don't know how to use the library and put your book in the library. Two, also have the free business profile. Utilize this. Use it, use it, use it. For most businesses, you can use this. There's just a few select that you cannot use Google Business Profile and you can Google those and find out what they are, but you can use this even if you don't show your address. And then I encourage you to use Google Ads. There's a keyword planner in Google Ads that I like to direct people to. And in that keyword planner, all the tools that you're paying for for keywords, the results are already there and you don't even have to put your credit card or anything into Google Ads, you can just use the keyword planner and find out how many people are searching, whether or not it's a high interest keyword or something that's a low interest or even one that's growing and developing. And you can confirm that in Google Trends and use that in anything that you post. You know, I was working with a business right now and I've been working with him since 2009. He started with a really, really small ad budget at about $300 a month. He built something in his garage. We partnered up and it was really nice because it was a dog product. And the first year he made 100,000. Then he made 600,000, actually 300,000 the following year, 600,000 year three. And he has just grown it. In fact, he doesn't even plan his Facebook, any, any of his socials to show up until 2.20 or 2.10 in the morning because at 2.20 is when his best shopper, women ages 44 to 54 years old are shopping. And so he doesn't plan anything to them because why? You know, he's got a dog product. So anybody with a dog can take advantage, but he wants to get the best hit for his spend and his effort because time is more valuable than money. So he puts everything into that to show up at 2.10 because people are going to search at 2.20. And I'm excited to say that he did 6.1 million last year and he's on track this year to do 8.1 million. And I'm excited because that product really hasn't changed in all this time. So it's really exciting to see that he's just pushing that with all that he's doing and everything's connected. 
So everything that I talked about today, you remember what I said, you're going to get a copy of today's slides if you put the number five in the question box, as well as because you've commented, you will get a copy of the recording. This is everything that I mentioned right here, all the resources. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, because that copy and the recording are not going to come till tomorrow, 24 hours later, it takes that long for the system to render, but take a screenshot of this and you might want to investigate that. And I would love to know exactly what you're going to do and you're going to apply from what you learned today because you just invested about 55 minutes of your time, which time is more valuable than money. Remember what I said about that? We all have only 86,400 seconds in any given day. No more, no less. So what are you going to apply? Because knowledge is not powerful. Do not believe that myth. Knowledge is not powerful until it is applied. So how are you going to apply it? My friend Jo says it so well, and I love her to death. She's actually out in the New Mexico, Albuquerque area. And she says this, that knowledge is knowing that the tomato is a fruit. Applied knowledge is not putting it in the fruit salad. So for you, what are you going to apply? I'd love to know in the question box. Let me know what you've learned, what you're going to add to your to-do list. Because if you don't get something from it, then my question is, why are you doing it? I always call that the win pr principle. What's important now? Is what you're doing now getting you closer to your goal? And if it's not, why are you doing it? So this is one of the other tools right here. You can go to Grow On Air. Every quarter we do a partner digital series and we cover topics that our small businesses are really looking for information right now. So small and local businesses, this is a great tool for you. All right, I see somebody's testing the site speed, I man the, the sites you manage. Bravo, because knowing that is going to be key. Doesn't matter anything that you do in SEO, if it doesn't show up in four seconds or less, you're losing a lot right there. I see somebody else is making a business profile straight away. All right, high five. I'm so excited for you. All right, I see trends and site speed. Absolutely, trends is an amazing tool too. Here's another one, Google Primer. This is a free app that you can download on iOS, iOS or Android. So that's iPhone or Android. And I love this because there's so many mini courses here. Even though all my degrees are in marketing, if I'm waiting for something, I'm in the checkout, I look at Primer and I get updates just right there, then and there. Then of course, if you are a small business and you want to apply for this and have your team apply, so I just applied for our team to get the digital marketing course um, and get certified through there and the scholarships are free till 2023 for those who have a small business or a local business. So keep that in mind, check this out so you can find more details there. Let me see what else. I'm gonna optimize, site, optimize your site. I need to find out what words are leading people to our competitors. Yes, know their words. Let me give you a hint, Sharon. Read your competitors' reviews. Because when you read their reviews, this is great competitive research. You'll find out what people love them for, what they're amazed about. You'll find out more about who their best customers are. You'll also see where they missed. And those are opportunities for you to be even better at what your competitors are providing, okay? Then, of course, if you want to learn anything more, get with a Google partner who invited you. So that's New Mexico Out Alliance. That's the America's SBDC at Tarleton State University. And that is also the Coffeeville Area Chamber of Commerce. Reach out to them because they really are vested in your success. And they have teams, they have people there that can help and answer your questions. Plus, they have access to the entire Google partner community, which means from 12 to 2 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they have direct access to the Google team. So you can never get Google to call you. That just doesn't happen. But if you have access to a Google community partner, they can talk to Google directly. So take advantage of the fact that they went through all the trouble of becoming partnered with you. And what are you going to do today? Remember what I said about applied knowledge? Knowledge is not powerful until it's applied. So let me see what else everybody's doing. I'm looking at here. I love the fact that everybody's shared here. This is your webinar, your time. We're three minutes before time. So before I finish up, I do want to say thank you to our Google partners. And I do want to ask you if you've got any questions. I'm here for you. I'm going to turn off the recording now.